This is the Camino de Santiago, a journey through the soul, through the body, and through northern Spain. We walked over 800 kilometers on the Camino del Norte route, starting in San Sebastian all the way to Santiago de Compostela. And along the way, we documented it all for you to empower you with the knowledge and advice you need to embark on your own Camino journey. In this visual guide, we take you day by day to show you everything you can expect on the Camino. The food to eat, the difficulty of the terrain, the most spectacular views along the way, the albergues to stay in, and the prices for everything. Welcome to our Camino. This is days one through 17. Good morning, guys. This is day one of walking El Camino del Norte, a trail that spans over 800 kilometers across northern Spain. And today is just the start. Let's see how it is and please wish us luck. We are starting our Camino in San Sebastian Donostia and today we're walking 21 kilometers all the way to Zaraúz. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Z-A-R-A-U-T-Z. -A and it's a two out of three on the difficulty scale. It's supposed to take five to eight hours. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but we have the shell guiding our way and there's also a yellow arrow. Same right here. So as long as you have your eyes on that, you could almost never go wrong. We already have only one hour in. An example of some trail magic. People are so nice leaving things along the trail. I think the Camino de Santiago has a pretty tight-knit community, which is cool. We're excited to be a part of that now as pilgrims currently on the trail seeking advice and one day hopefully we can give back and share our advice with you guys and we're doing that here sharing our journey even so you can see all of our trials and tribulations and <laughs> avoid all the mistakes that we make do as we say not as we do here on Ellie and Senshi <laughs> and let's hope there's no mistakes yeah it said two out of three on the difficulty scale but it's feeling more like a three at this first part from San Sebastian to Ayelda, but I guess the views make up for it. I mean, we gained a lot of elevation in a short amount of time, but the bright side of that is having views of the sea from up high. But could I use some lunch and a break? Yes. Are we going to? No. And these are the types of folks you meet along the trail. Look at the size of his head. Look at the ears, they're almost as big as yours. Hi, <laughs> okay, four hours in. To be honest, it's becoming a bit hard. You can feel it in your back, you can feel it in your knees. It's slight elevation, but you can still feel it. The first four hours, it's, it was like a little song, just like singing a song. But right now, it's not so nice anymore. Yeah. It is it is the first day. Of course, it's gonna be hard for the first five days. But you start to feel it at a certain point. Oh, we got this. Yes, sir. We got this. Yes, we do. Okay, Sanji and I are just talking, <laughs> passing the time, and we keep saying how amazed we are. The landscape changes every like three minutes. Like we were next to cliffside, by the ocean then we were like in the pacific northwest like foggy evergreen trees like super tall really dense forest and now we're in like a really vibrant green farm it's landscape amazing. like literally within a second can change just like that that's el camino baby okay we have officially entered the orios little city which marks a checkpoint of 16 kilometers a pillar Next checkpoint and the last point of the day, we still have just a little above five kilometers. So, little update five kilometers away. We really feel the walking now. Yeah. Our backs hurt. Feet hurt. Feet hurt. Knees Shoulders hurt. hurt. <laughs> We're just starting to actually feel it at this point. But of yeah. course, it's just our bodies adjusting to the weight, to the walking. So I don't think it's a big concern, to be honest. It's just a natural thing to happen mm -hmm. at this moment. We'll acclimate. Same doing it all again, same time tomorrow. So I guess we'll have to. If you guys are curious how we're doing, these are the vibes right now with about four kilometers to go to Zadaut. Just needed a place to rest for at least two minutes. That's all. And I guess the 
pavement was a good enough place. <laughs> Pavements are amazing. And we made it to our final destination for the day, Zara'uts. We only have a kilometer to go. We're just outside of the city. So now we're gonna find an albergue to sleep in for the night. And we finally made it to the Bly Bly Hostel. This will be our sleep for tonight. And let's see inside what they offer. We checked in for 23 euros per person for the night. They had a really nice common area and a kitchen that we could use. They also provided this cubby for dirty hiking shoes and trekking poles. And the room was really comfortable. It was a dormitory style room, but the beds had their privacy with the curtain there. And you even had a lamp and a little cubby to put your things in the bed. They also provided these spacious lockers for you to put all of your things. Would highly recommend. We crashed here after a long day of walking and we will see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, guys. It's day two of walking El Camino del Norte. We are just checking out of the hostel, got all of our things packed, we're ready for the day. But first, <clears throat> put this on. I need it. Take note, even if you're walking in the spring, you need sunscreen because you're hiking, walking all day in the sun. So. Don't forget that. This right here is why we did El Camino del Norte. There's a ton of different routes to choose from, and this is known as the most physically challenging one, which is a bit intimidating because we didn't train that much, but it's also known as the most beautiful one, as you can see here. And apparently beaches and aesthetics means a lot to us. We made it to our first checkpoint, five kilometers away, Yetaria, and well-deserved coffee. Yes. Until our final destination, we still have only two kilometers, so taking it easy. And we just made it to our final destination for the day, Askizu. We're checking into the Agro Turismo Agote Aundi albergue right there. So let's see what the situation is like there. Okay, we are so excited. We just checked in and this is our room for tonight. In an albergue. And it wasn't extra cost or anything, 15 euros a person, and we have a private room, a private bathroom, and freaking sea view. I mean, can you ask for any better? I feel like this is just a god wing. And later on, we also have a homemade dinner with them, which was 12 euros per person, but it's right down, it's in the middle of nature, so what else could you ask for? Perfect. This is day three of walking El Camino del Norte and today we are walking from Askizu to Deva. It's gonna take us 16 kilometers and approximately four hours to get there. So Ellie barely got out of the bed this morning. Yep, I can't get out of bed. <laughs> so we are again taking it a bit easier. Two kilometers in, we are passing through our first little town checkpoint, Zumaya, Spain. We're gonna head to a market, pack up some lunch for the day and keep going. The route along this northern part of Spain is in Basque country, so we're seeing a lot of those Basque flags and experiencing that culture. It's really cool. Directly out of Zamaya, there's a really steep incline and hills like this are what make the Camino del Norte one of the more challenging routes of the Camino de Santiago. There's a lot of hills, a lot of elevation. Really big ups, really big ups and really big downs. So. Yeah, constant ups and downs. We made it to a little rest stop area. There are some toilets you can use, which are appreciated because there aren't that many toilets along the trail itself. Um, you find a way, I guess, but it's nice to actually use a bathroom. And there are these nice picnic tables. So we're gonna hang out with some pilgrims, have a little break here, and we'll see you guys on the road. We just got to the town of Itziar. It's three and a half kilometers to Deba. And just before this, we went up a giant, really steep hill. So we need a little break. And a pro tip, we always fill up our water bottles along the way. 
and bring along these electrolyte packets. They're a godsend, super light to carry. We love the brand Element. It's all natural, but this is really what you need after sweating so much throughout the day. Get some hydration and you're good to go. <laughs> oh, you're a nice little fella. Hi. Oh. I don't think we're that scary. Jeez. Okay, bye bye. And we officially made it to Deba. We only have 150 more stairs down to the center, so only thing left is to find accommodation for the night. We are in the center and we are really having a hard time finding the accommodation right here. So we had arrived to Deba, but honestly the upper gate there didn't look super comfortable and there was only one option there. So we walked one extra kilometer along the path and got this hotel instead and it's honestly a lot better. Good morning guys, it's day 4 walking Camino del Norte. Today we are walking from Deba to Marquina Hemein. It's the hardest day so far, it's gonna take us 24.3 kilometers and it's up the hill, difficulty scale is at the max 3 out of 3. We just checked out, we're gonna grab some breakfast and hit the road. Our starting point today is Mutriku, which is one kilometer outside of Deba because of the last night accommodation. But even a kilometer away, you still have yellow arrows that lead you to rejoining to the trail instantly. So no worries if it's a bit off your trail for accommodation or anything that pops up, you'll be rejoining the trail no matter what. Seven point seven kilometers in, we are in Olats. If you're thinking on taking a break, maybe wait until Olats because there is a really nice restaurant. We grab coffees and there's a really nice sitting area in the shade, in the sun. So you can just whip out what you brought. You can take something in the restaurant if you wish. So just a little tip. And we are doing pretty good. We walked seven point seven kilometers in an hour I would say, mm -hmm. hour and 10 minutes without stopping. A lot of elevation too. A lot of elevation, so first two, three days we couldn't do it without stopping for uh, at least 10 minute breaks, but now we just went through it and we are feeling much, mm -hmm. much better. Our endurance is definitely getting better. So, we'll see you in 15 days where we won't have a single stop. <laughs> the cows are on the road and so are we. Had a nice stop, now we're hitting the road. 17.16.5 kilometers until our final destination and we are feeling pretty pumped. Passing all that, two kilometers in, it's all uphill. I think this is the hardest part of the trail itself. It's four kilometers all uphill. There's no trees covering you. The sun is hot, the wreck, so make sure you put on sunscreen because even 30 minutes without cover can get you sunburn. So just a little tip. On the plus side, we are in totally secluded nature. The views are amazing. I don't know if I would say they make up for the struggle, but it sure doesn't make it harder. See you at the top. After an hour and 20, we're just about at the top of this huge hill, mountain. This has been the highest elevation we've had to gain through the entire trail so far. It was a doozy, but we're almost there. And look at these views. You have the sea, you have mountains, forests. And you can see our sweat yeah. <laughs> dripping from us. This is the first shade in hour and a half as well. Whew. 13 kilometers in. We made it to Arnoate. This is the only place in the area that has running water. And to be honest, we are low on it because you have a really big uphill. You'll need a lot of liquid. So when you enter here, just make sure to restock on water, refill. We made it to Arnoate. We had a nice greeting. I, I hope it's a nice greeting. She keeps following us. <laughs> okay, we come in peace. We just want water. Yeah, they occupy this area where you can sit. Are we actually going to be attacked by a bunch of chicken? Psh, shush. 
We, didn't, we made it up a mountain and the rooster is our downfall. <laughs> Come on, man. Why do you keep following us? There's a sign that says not to drink. And we're really thirsty. And we are really thirsty. So we're not sure. There is some house there, so we're gonna ask them if it's drinkable or maybe refill there. Because we really need it. There's no one in this house. There is no one to ask. There's a big dog, so we can't actually ask. So we are hoping to find something else. We're on the last half a liter of water. We have some some clementines, so I hope we can make it. We'll keep you guys updated. We're currently checking the Buen Camino app to see if there's any potable water near us. Um, so make sure you have that app downloaded before you start your Camino and download the guide for your specific route beforehand too. Uh, the sun is beating really down on us and we still have, what, 10 kilometers to go? Yeah. 10 kilometers. Yeah. And it's all mountainous up, down, up, down. So pray for us. Hopefully we find some trail magic along the way. So 40 minutes from the last update. I don't want to say we're struggling because we had a lot of intake of water and electrolytes, but our mouth is dry and we finally see some houses there. So hopefully, we will find some water there. Dios mío, por favor. <laughs> oh yes, finally. Those houses had water. After three hours of no access to water. <sighs> Thank God. There's a really big downhill when you're coming to Marquina. So we are trying to save our knees while we got the chance. Finally on some flat ground. We are just outside of Marquina Gemen and we are gonna find our albergue now. And we'll show you guys the conditions there and then we're gonna rest these little piggies because these dogs are barking, my God. Nice. Another day, another struggle. Good morning, guys. It's day five. Today we are walking 26 kilometers from Marquina Jimena to Guernica. And the guidebook says we're gonna be walking by the little river all day. It's nice, it's like a walk in the park. Literally. Not making the same mistake as yesterday. Every source of water we are filling up. Learn on our mistakes so you don't do them. These are the views we can expect throughout the whole day. We came to what it seems to be the last kind of stop before going into the forest. Right there. So I think we're gonna stop by the river, have a little coffee, just enjoy, intake all of this journey. Just rest our little bones and we will we'll hit the road, guys. Got these bad boys. Yes! Thank you so much. They're needed today after a long day yesterday. They're really needed. We're feeling pretty tired today. We honestly didn't get the best sleep in the Elbergay last night. I know. Elbergays are a great way to build community with other pilgrims, but to be honest, they're not the most comfortable. It's like a hostel dorm. You get woken up through the night, early in the morning, whatnot, bunk bed style, shared bathroom and all that. So we're a little tired today. And on the note of Elbergays, they also provide a pilgrim men menu dinner. And they're normally around 12 euros. And to be honest, in our experience, it doesn't seem like the best bang for your buck. It's really basic ingredients, like seems like it would be a cheap meal to build and it's not really like a local homemade experience. It's more like uh, fried chicken. Like I don't know if that's local to the Basque country area and whatnot. So you could probably find a meal that's more satisfying. You get more for your money at a local restaurant, but we understand it's a great way to build community with other pilgrims and if you have no other options it's great that they have them but that's just 
our opinion. We are six kilometers in, we made it to the town of Bolivar. It is super cute here. It has very typical Northern Basque architecture of the buildings around. Again, another reason why it's so cool to walk Del Norte, passing through all these beautiful towns. Next up, we're going one kilometer completely uphill until we reach Zenaruza, and that will be pretty cool because there's a monastery there. That's also an albergue. We're not staying there, but we're gonna check it out. Sometimes you need a little refresh. There is a really nice shop in Bolivar. You can grab a coffee, even a stamp. They do that because the church is not open in these times. So just a little bit. And they have beautiful hand carved wood shells if you want a nice souvenir. This is the monastery at Zenautza. You can actually hear the monks chanting in the background here. And like I said, this is an albergue you can stay in. It's highly recommended. It seems like a really unique experience. They even make their own craft beer here. So if you get a chance, you should do that. We, on the other hand, have to keep pushing forward. Yeah. Spring is in the air. And we made it to Muniti Bar. We are halfway done still 13 kilometers left but we find the perfect little picnic spot right there we have some packed lunch so we're gonna sit enjoy it a bit with a river running next to us so and a waterfall and a little waterfall as well again a little pro tip we were passing through a small city so we didn't know if we we're gonna have any stops along the way to eat so we brought around this morning we got pre-made stuff with quinoa and veggies and pasta with tuna. These are really nice because they're already done. They're full of carbs, so these are always to go. We have two bananas and we have... Granola bars. Granola bars right here. However, we did forget cutlery. So along the way, I made us these chopsticks. From branches. From branches, Thank so you. we got something to eat with. Perfect. Again, pro tip: if you are stuck, don't have it. Here, little chopsticks. And that's how the chopstick looks. Look at that. We are 5.4 kilometers away from Guernica. We are doing some really nice progress. We got these sticks improvised because we lost ours. In other words, we forgot them at the coffee shop on the day two, to be honest. So we've been walking without them. So this is a little help. We can ditch them along the way. Someone else can have a use from it. We are hurting a bit, but it's all manageable. We walked 21 kilometer, and now the last five kilometers is a big uphill, and then the huge downhill. You just have to deal with it with the last atoms of your strength. Finally, Guernica Lumo. Thank God. Oh, that was a big bike. Now we're gonna go in the city, find our accommodation, relax our bodies, and thank you guys for staying with us through the struggles, and we'll see you back on the road. seven of our 40-day walk across Spain on the Camino del Norte. Here we're in front of the Bilbao Cathedral and today we're walking all the way from Bilbao to Porto Galete, 14 kilometers. We did start seven days ago in San Sebastian, Spain, but we actually just got our pilgrim passports today. We got them in the Bilbao Cathedral and you can find them in albergues, cathedrals, and churches along the route. It's important to have it because that's how they'll validify the fact that you did walk the entire Camino de Santiago once you arrive to Santiago de Compostela. Just make sure you stamp it along the way at albergues and churches and you're good to go. One really nice, really wholesome thing about the Camino is anyone you pass by that sees that you are hiking the Camino clearly based on your pack and trekking poles will say to you, one Camino, it's really positive, really encouraging atmosphere and all of the pilgrims say it as well. It's just 
an awesome community. We passed through so many amazing sites and landmarks on the Camino del Norte that this has to be one of the coolest. We're standing in front of the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao. It's a museum of modern and contemporary art, but what it's really known for is the architecture. You can see it's incredible. It's by the legendary ar architect, Frank Gehry. A marvel to behold. If you're new here, we are full-time budget travelers, so we always pack our own lunches, and it's no different on the trail. Honestly, would highly recommend this. We always just head to a market, grab a few cheap ingredients, and make a fat lunch. And we always enjoy it with the most amazing views. Right now, we're in Bilbao, next to the river, next to a sunning bridge. So, not too shabby, and the whole thing is just a couple bucks. Update, six kilometers in. Eight to go. We have switched our packs to our front side because our backs are starting to hurt. The weather changed in our favor. And FYI, if you want to take the route that's easier for this day as well, like we did, you just hug the river the whole time. And there are some occasional markers as well. So you know you're still on the Camino path. Six kilometers in, hour and a half later, two hours later, we are just now leaving the Bilbao. That happens when you're passing through a large city. That means mostly you'll be going through the city, seeing some nice sights. Where are those arrows? People are probably always wondering, like, ooh, what are they looking around? Like, we're always like mm, snooping around, like what? But actually, we're always searching for arrows, so we know our path. But yeah, like we, we are, are right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we are loving our life. We're enjoying yeah, we are. it. So. Who cares what someone thinks? As long as we're happy. Amen to that. But where are those arrows though? Hmm. Oh, I see, I see two. Nice. <laughs> the path will show itself. Right there, there's two arrows. So that way we go. The trail provides, as the they say. The trail always provides. Undeniably, if you took the harder road, you would have much more nature much better views but no matter what road you take on Camino del Norte through the northern Spain every view out there is just stunning so no matter what you choose you won't regret it because just 10 minutes after the last update we were in the middle of city and now the pad is leading us straight to this nature through this park it's just it's just amazing I swear to God, I think this is the greatest thing we have ever experienced. Yes, I second that for sure. An hour and a half later, we finally made it to Portugalete, a beautiful port town. Now that it's all said and done, would we recommend this route? Honestly, I don't know. It was the easier one, it was all flat road, but it was pavement, which are really hard on the joints, really hard on the knees, the soles of the feet. So we're still aching after the day, even though it was less kilometers and maybe going uphill. So take that information and do with it what you will. And now we're gonna go find our hostel for the night and we'll show you what it's like. Okay, strike one. We reached the, one of the hostels and it was already booked. So again, pro tip, plan your trips plan ahead, book it before or even call. So we are on a hunt for the second one. And this is a really interesting bridge. It's one of a kind, it's World Heritage Site. You cannot go on the other side unless you take this. Okay, we are just outraged at this moment. We arrived at 3.30 and everything is fully booked, like literally everything. All the albergues, every single hostel, every pension in the city, everything is literally booked. So. Camino is not treating us really good the past days. We literally had to book a room in a hotel for 88 euros. It was the uh, cheapest option available, 88 euros. That's the cheapest, cheapest one. Albergues usually go for, I don't know, five to 10 euros. And even the albergues here were 24 euros. So you're paying for a bed, 24 euros in a shared dorm for 20 people. There's no curtain, there's no nothing. If any pilgrims who have done this route are watching, I would love to know your thoughts. Maybe it's inflation, maybe things, maybe the prices of things have skyrocketed. I don't know, but this seems outrageous. And our guidebook even 
named the prices and they were much lower when the book was written. So we don't know what's happening, if it's just this year, inflation or busier, more people are doing the routes, I don't know. Okay, I know we were really mad <laughs> about our accommodation, but here we are. And this is We've... our accommodation for tonight. We are literally staying in a palace. So we've changed our tunes a bit. <laughs> Don't get me bad. wrong, it's still still overpriced for the thing we are doing, but at least this is where we are staying tonight. Right in the water. I'll take it. I'll take it, I guess. <laughs> Let's check it out now inside. Okay, we just checked into our room. It has a bathtub. I will see you later. And a really comfortable room. We already laid on the bed, so disregard a little mess. Mm -hmm. With a sea view of the port. TV, really comfy. So we're gonna make the best of it. We're gonna do some work. We're gonna get some nice sleep tonight. And we'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Good morning guys, it's day 8 of walking Camino del Norte. Today we are walking from Portugalete to Castro Urdiales. It's gonna take us 26 kilometers and approximately 8 hours. On a difficulty scale, it's scale 1, but it's a really cold day, really windy. Wish us luck today guys. 8 days in and our good luck with sunshine has officially ran out. Today is 100% overcast, drizzling all day. We'll see how the weather turns out the rest of the day but we have officially broken out the ponchos we have the pack covered we're all set we are prepared for this but it doesn't make it any more fun this weather was bound to come on a spring camino del norte the rain is still coming down really strong we are taking shelter wherever we can find it it's kind of miserable to be honest my shoes are getting soaked through they're not totally waterproof these hokas and the socks are getting soaked so I feel some blisters coming in. Today is a struggle and I think the rain is going to continue. However we bring you guys with us on good times, bad times, sunny, rainy. We bring you through our struggles to show you everything around, not just the good times. We want to show you how the weather can be, how we are struggling through the rain, through the wind, mm -hmm. through the sunny weather. So we're here to show you everything guys. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, right? This is a part of the Camino. All different types of weather. But hey, no one walks a Camino de Santiago pilgrimage because it's easy, right? And blue skies ahead oh, in the distance. Yes. Let's hope. Please. Let's hope they Please. they stay and let's hope we're going that way. Okay. We are wrong. It in fact was the gray skies ahead and really bad raindrops. It's coming down really hard. We just arrived to Pobania, but we needed a sap. We needed a nice warm drink, get dry a little bit, our feet are soaking wet, and readjust our pack. So we're going to reevaluate here and see if we can continue on because it's really brutal today. And we're back on the road. The rain is still going, but we decided to push through. So we have eight or nine kilometers left for the day. The sun is just coming out over the horizon. Now we're back along the ocean. So thanks for looking up. Pay attention along the way, every second of the way. Never let your guard down, guys. And fun fact, now that we've reached Anton, we are officially in Cantabria. It's a totally autonomous region of Spain. We were just in Basque country, for our entire route so far. And now the next few days, we get to enjoy and experience Cantabria. On this stretch of the Camino del Norte, there's a lot of choices you have on which road you can take. It's like a choose your own adventure path. On this one in Onton, you can go right to the coastal road and that's 7.2 kilometers or left on the quote official road and that's 12.4 kilometers. So have it however you want. 
we are going to go by the ocean. We are on a shorter path, but it's not easy. It's still uphill, it's on the pavement. I think the past two days of pavement has really brought us some, not like injuries, but like uncomforts in our muscles, in our joints. At least blisters are acting up. Thank God we only have 30, 30 minutes left of walking to our accommodation. I don't know what you prefer. We chose choose pads by the coast, shorter ones, but again, they're not the best option as well because of the payment itself. It will hurt you, so choose wisely. Senshi is literally steaming because he's his body heat is so warm and the day is so cold and rainy. Look at that. And we didn't stop for three hours, three and a half hours. Not once. 24 kilometers later, we finally made it to our accommodation for the night. We're staying in Agua Viva in the city of Castro Ordiales. Um, we'll show you the room. We got a double room for around 50 euros. So we'll show you what it's like. Okay, we just checked in. After nine hours of walking, we have finally stopped. And to be honest, guys, it is hard a bit. We said before, okay, we're taking it like chance, but like after today, we are really feeling it. It is hard. We're not gonna lie. We're gonna push it through, of course, but just for someone out there, we're not discouraging anyone to do something amazing as this trail, as this walk across Spain, the pilgrimage. But just to give a heads up, we didn't do any training, so our only training is the Camino. Like we are, we are training as we are going, we are adjusting to backpacks, we're adjusting to walks, but we are feeling it in our muscles, in our knees, in our joints, every joint, in our backs as well. Our heads are the only thing that doesn't hurt. So, I don't know, we're gonna get some good sleep and keep you guys updated tomorrow as well. Good morning, guys. It is day nine of walking El Camino del Norte and we are not giving up, we're pushing forward. We're almost a quarter of the way done with this huge 500 mile journey and we have a big day ahead of us so let's do it okay probably one of the reasons why we are feeling it harder these past two three days is because of the weather first five days it was really sunny and now every single day it's like overcast it's raining as soon as we wake up in the morning it's rain on the window so it really it really brings you that hard feeling like of getting out of bed going on to the rain but I think that's life. Sometimes you'll get sunny, sometimes you'll get cold, but we are back in the nature, back with the animals. We are feeling super happy, super pumped. No matter what conditions are out, we are doing this thing, guys. We are crushing it. Little update. First big checkpoint we arrived to Islares, which marks 11 or 12 kilometers in. We still have 19 kilometers. Hey everyone, little update. Two hours later, we made it into the town of Liendo. And if you decide to take the route that we took that goes along the highway, just make sure to take super, super good care as you're walking because there aren't always pedestrian walkways. Sometimes you are tight in with the cars and there is some fast traffic going by. So be careful on that. But we made it to Liendo, safe and sound. Now we have 7.2 kilometers to Laredo. It's supposed to be some of the nicest views of today's path. Look at that. I think that's an eagle. Oh my god, I think so too. Do you see the wingspan oh on that? Oh my god. Look at that people. Oh my god, that was Let's, let's get this mountain From the top of the mountain, we have officially set our eyes on Laredo, our final stop for the night. We can do this. We made it down the mountain and we made it into the town of Laredo. This is where we're stopping for the day. Thank God, because I can't take a kilometer more. That was about 31 under our belts, feeling 
alive, barely. We're gonna go check out our El Brigade, only five minutes from here. And like we said, it's a nunnery, so that should be cool. We're gonna show you guys what it's like. And this is how the inside looks. You have bunk beds on each side. This room has only four beds. And this one is a, as well if needed. If you're cold, you have blankets. You have a toilet right here outside. There's also the reception and when you arrive at the reception, there's a kitchen there as well. We won't show that because that would violate some kind of privacy for them. So I'm just here to show you the rooms and you can use microwave, fridge, anything you need. So yeah, pretty neat, right? One of a kind experience hosted by nuns. Good morning guys, it's day 10 of walking Camino del Norte. This behind me is the nunnery we stayed at last night. We just checked out and to mention the price was only 10 euros for the night per person. And it was a really comfortable, really, really clean place. We felt like home here. So we checked out and we're just gonna start walking now. Today we are walking 13 kilometers from Laredo to Noja. It's a little bit of an easier day because yesterday was a doozy with 31 kilometers and our bodies are hurting. So we're gonna take it easy and then crank it up a notch the day after. Obviously, the point of the Camino is that you are walking your way across Spain, 500 miles, 800 kilometers, all the way to Santiago de Compostela on this huge pilgrimage. However, today we are taking some transportation and it's not what you think. We literally have a 50 minute walk right along the beach to get to our next checkpoint when leaving Laredo. That is, again, one of the benefits of walking the Camino del Norte. Things like this are super casual along the route. And I can officially say I really do love long walks on the beach. I've been waiting to use that joke, I swear to God, guys. <laughs> for seven days now. For, for 10 days now. <laughs> Oh, she's chasing me! <laughs> Speedy Gonzalez! You win. There you go, I got this. <laughs> well, we've kept you waiting long enough. The suspense is over. The transportation that we're taking is actually a ferry. It's only a five minute ferry. So unfortunately for our feet, they don't get much of a break, but it's taking us just across from Laredo to Santonia. And this is actually a part of the official Camino route. So we're not cutting any shortcuts here, but we are grateful for a little bit of automatic transportation here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And right behind us is the ferry ticket office. We're going to go check it out. After a quick five minute trip, we are back on firm ground. Sadly, I could have used a little bit more of a break, but that was really nice, really quick, and it was only two euros and 50 cents. So don't skip that. I know the way, if you don't take the ferry, the other way around inland is something like 20 kilometers. So <laughs> definitely go this route. <laughs> and once again, we are on the beach. There is so many surfers back there. This is the recommended route that goes through this mountain right here. Of course, we are taking this one because it led us to this amazing beach. But if you don't want to climb up, you can take the highway as well. But we're obviously going to take that one. But this is just... Mm. I would love to just lay here, take a break here, chill here for the day. But we're going to continue on. We must. But this is just absolutely stunning. The reason some people opt for the highway route, even though it's a little bit longer, is because this road is a little bit more treacherous, really rocky. We're going up a mountain and there's some sand slash dirt from the beach, so things are pretty loose and narrow and you have to take care. On this channel, safety is number one, as always. But being in a hard situation is second right behind it, but it is worth it. It's really worth it. every step of the way. And it is weird because of this. Feels like we're walking on the edge of the earth right now.
we thought that view was good. But then we made it to the top, baby. <laughs> Beach on one side. Century in the middle. Beach on the other side. And you see as long as your eye can reach. You can't even fathom what it feels like to be oh. here. Only the eye can do it justice. We're taking our shoes off, taking these piggies for a walk on the beach. And we have a wide open beach just for us. And just for us. This is all for us. This is all for us. <laughs> and he's off. And he's still going. Oh, Woo, really cold. Really cold. <laughs> but that's something to witness, I guess. Oh my god. I'm super happy. Me too. <laughs> I'm the happiest ever. This has probably been our favorite day on the Camino del Norte, and inarguably, this has to be one of the nicest beaches along the route. And you do not want to take the high, highway route. You want to go through those treacherous rocks because the reward is so worth it. Look at this deep ocean blue, totally huge empty beach behind us and this vibrant green hills behind us. It's literally paradise here. About six hours later, we finally made it to our final destination, Noha. It did take us longer today because we were too busy frolicking and jumping in the water, as you can see, but that's what life is about, right? You have to enjoy the journey, and I think that is what the Camino is about for us. It's not always hard days. Sometimes you just get to enjoy and just feel joy. Just checked in, and this is our stay for the night. Don't mind the mess bathroom with a hot tub meat right here is a really big bed some area to work and to top it all off this is our view for tonight Noha didn't really have that many albergues or hostels to stay in and by that many I mean any so we had to stay in a hotel for the night but we honestly could not recommend this one more. Las Olas, we're not sponsored or anything, of course, but we're just trying to share the ones that we've really enjoyed along the way. And this one has to be the best bang for your buck, the best value for your money that we've experienced. It was 60 euros a night, but for two people that comes out to 30. And considering that we saved a lot of money last night where we had a bed for only 10 euros a person, the average comes out somewhere around 20 euros for each night on the Camino. And from here on out, we're always gonna leave a link to the properties that we stay in that we really like in the description so you guys can easily get those there or you can find it on booking.com like i said it's las olas good morning guys it's day 11 of walking camino del norte today we have 32 kilometers ahead of us from noha to santander but we got this on the road again woke up eight o'clock straight on the road and here's the thing if for someone who has never done this kind of thing in the morning, once you wake up, you'll barely walk to the toilet because every, literally every single muscle in your body is hurting. Your joints feel like they've been through hell, but that's normal. That's normal after big days of walking. After five, 10 minutes of walking, your joints, your muscles will warm up. And now you're just like that back on track. Same as we are doing right now, so. Don't be discouraged, don't be worried, everything will be okay. We already made it to the charming little town of Castillo, which is three kilometers from our starting point, Noha. We are having a really nice tempo today, really good pace. We feel motivated to get to Santander today, and some days we've taken it easy, so that means we gotta kick it up a notch right now. We got this. Yes. And we are officially in San Miguel, which marks 
7.7 kilometers. Yes. We got that down in an hour. So that just means it's really easy path, steady. So this is looking promising. 32 kilometers, 25 to go. That's nada. Nada. <laughs> nada. We're saying that now. Catch us in six hours. <laughs> <laughs> just leaving San Miguel. And now we're going up to Barreo. It's three kilometers up. And this is the highest elevation we've encountered in the past days. It's 150 meters. I think the worst is done. The hardest is done. Because the first five, six, seven days, there was like elevation 450 meters up to 500 meters. Mm -hmm. So now the elevation of 150 meters sounds like a walk in the park. And now it's all smooth from here. Just climbed to the top of Barreo. Woo! We just find the perfect lunch break. Yes. Right here we have these fat sandwiches again that we prepared. And these are the views we're gonna be enjoying. <sighs> Life is good. We had a nice filling lunch and now we are back on the road. Hats on, sunscreen on, the sun is coming down, it's pretty humid, but we're prepared. We just made it to the town of Boreo. Officially. officially in. Yeah. We were just like 200 meters down. Now we're officially in. It's becoming a bit hard. We're on the street, there is no shade. The sun is pounding on us real hard. We're all sweaty, sunscreen on, hats on, but you can still feel it. It's only 11.20. But the sun is already so strong. Humidity is 80%. 85. 80, 85%, so that's what it's destroying us right now. We're just leaving the Boreo. Hopefully there's some forest, some shade up front. Woo, woo wee mom. And of course the cows are so smart. Buen camino to you cowies. Of course they found the perfect shade, right? Yeah. <laughs> Fellow pilgrims back there. Big checkpoint mark. We are walking in Guemes. 16 kilometers walked, 16 to go. Supposedly the other 16 kilometers is magnificent. With the viewpoints from top to the beaches. Cannot wait. This is why El Camino del Norte provides. We could have taken a shorter path that leads you directly to Somo. We'll be there in an hour, but instead Del Norte brings you through this route for these magnificent views. Every chance you get, take the, take the longer route that brings you by the coast or to the mountain if you can, because you don't want to miss on this, guys. Honestly, we're so tired, we don't even know how many kilometers left, but it is looking really close. You can see Santander in the background there. That beach sticking out is Somo from there. We're actually going to get a ferry across Santander. It's the only way, it's the official route. And right behind us, we have Isla de Santa Maria. So it's been incredible views along this walk, and I'm ready for it to be over. Hey, cool. Right there, there's an ice cream shop at the top. This is the viewpoint, so we're just enjoying it. After 30 kilometers, this is what you get. We deserve this. Cheers. <laughs> right now, we're gonna take a ferry. Yes, a ferry. Another transportation, back to back. Yesterday, we had a ferry. Today, we had a ferry, but it's not on our own it's the official route recommended route take a ferry across these small places so that's what we're doing and it gets you directly into santander instead of going so many kilometers all the way around we're going to be there within a 30 minute ride <laughs> 
Finally made it to Santander. 32 painful kilometers later, we are in the land of Santander. As always, we're gonna go find our accommodation and we're gonna show you guys what it's like. Okay, we just checked into our accommodation for the night. We are using Airbnb tonight. Whenever we are staying in bigger cities, we always check our options with albergues, pensions, on booking.com and on Airbnb. And this one is has a fully functional kitchen, TV and everything and privacy and a nice shower. And it was only $40 a night. So split between two people, it really makes sense. So always do your research, especially when you're in bigger cities and have more options. Good morning guys from Chile Santander. Today is the day 12 of walking Camino de Santiago. Can you believe it's already been 12 days stay with us guys stay with us wish us luck an hour in and we're just leaving the city center of santander it's a pretty large spread out city so just now we're getting out of the hustle and bustle we have reached the first checkpoint of the day peña castillo it is a really small town it's more like an extension of santander like we didn't even notice we arrived because it all is just city like and along a really busy road and Obviously, you should all you should walk the entire Camino you're able to, but if you had to take a bus, maybe you could skip this section because it's sort of dangerous. You're crossing a lot of busy roads. See, you're right next to the cars on the road. So we're not saying take a bus or skip out on any, but if you had to, this section is not too beautiful and it's a little dangerous, so. Just leaving Santander, entering Peña Castillo. There's a really nice bar like right at the start it's called bar la estrella and they have really good prices really good sandwiches like this whole thing was three euros it's really warm Fresh. it's really nice freshly made and the portions are really big so that will fill you up so little recommendation bar la estrella if you're here make a quick stop fill yourself in and good to go Another big day, back to back. Today we're doing a whopping 35 kilometers from Santander to Santillana del Mar. We have to do a couple of big days in a row to make up for some time because we have travel Schengen visas and we only have 30 days left on them. So we have to get to Santiago within 30 days. So time to crank it up a notch. Today we're dealing with some fog, but remember you can do anything you set your mind to. Let's do this. Nine kilometers later, we are in Santa Cruz. And to be honest, the path continues to be the same. It's all pavement, little streets. To be honest, nothing special to see, but sometimes it's like that. You'll be on the most amazing beaches, but sometimes you'll just be walking through little cities and streets. That's the Camino. Everything is there. From Bu Pielagos, there is a train that takes you just across the river to the next stop, which is Mogado. It's only 200 meters. It's about one euro 50. And it is definitely the superior option, highly recommended because otherwise you're either, your two choices are either taking a dangerous and illegal route that crosses the train tracks by foot. Do not do that. Or you have to go eight kilometers out of your way to get around that river. Skip the And the it's recommended by the guide itself. And don't be fooled when you get into Boo, you'll see arrows that will lead you to the eight kilometer way around. But just know when you get to Boo, you should be looking for El Brigue Piedad and then the train station is right next to it. Just hop on the train there. If you follow the arrows in Boo, you'll, you'll be taken around the long way. So better to know in advance. This is the train. It literally brings you just 200 meters down, just recommended route so you don't have to go eight kilometers around so it's just there you exit on the other side and that's it after a super quick two minute ride on the train we're already in mogro and this would have taken an hour and a half to go around the entire river with the eight kilometer alternative route so better that you know about the train that's what we're trying to do here is give you guys a visual guidebook essentially on every step of the way so you know the best routes and the best options out there. 
little update for you guys. We are somewhere between Mogro and Kudon, about 17 kilometers in, which means 19 to go. Today is a bit difficult with this fog, kind of bringing our spirits down, but you're gonna have days like this. You just have to push through it. Moo. Tough crowd. Nice. Nice. Oh, he devoured that. He loved that. <laughs> the angle is so funny. Look at him. Oh, another one. Oh. You want to get in on the action? Yeah. We're just outside of Kudon, and this is the viewpoint, the only viewpoint that we have along the route today. And as you can see, the fog kind of ruins it. Um, but we're going to continue on from here until Kudon. We're following along the pipeline. That's where the route goes, you see the arrows. We just left Kudon and I want to be strong for you guys, but it's kind of hard to stay positive today. It's been an ugly day, I don't know what to say. I know the Del Norte route is normally gorgeous, maybe it's the fog, maybe we missed some sights, but we're walking along a pipeline for from Kudon to Hara. And we are in a lot of pain. We've already covered 25 kilometers for the day. And yesterday we did 32 kilometers. So back to back, it's just feeling like too much on our bodies. I don't know. I feel like I almost have a torn muscle. It's not quite actually pulled or torn, but I feel it really strained. And I don't know if I should push it goes all the way down. Well, we just arrived to Brekwehada, just passed over this bridge that you only need to pass to get to across the train tracks. And from here, it's another 10 kilometers to Santiana del Mar, but it's starting to pour and I don't think I can make it. I don't wanna push it, too far with an injury and then make it worse and be out for a week. I'd rather get proper rest tonight, take care of it, rest the leg up so that tomorrow I can continue walking instead of being out for a few days or worse. So I think we might have to catch a bus to Santiana because we checked an all the accommodation in Burakwahara and I think the next town is Vivero is all booked up for the night. It's getting late in the day. We had a huge day behind us. So our best option is Santiana del Mar at this point, which means catching something on wheels because this leg is not gonna make it. Oh, we of course are disappointed because we want to walk the entire thing, but it's our only option at this point, hopefully get to Santiana, get a good nice rest, and hopefully we can continue tomorrow like normal. And I don't have a pulled muscle. We'll see. And finally, after a long day, we made it to our accommodation for the night in Santiana del Mar. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much for being here with us on this journey. And hopefully we will see you guys again tomorrow on the road. Good morning guys, this is day 13 of walking Camino de Santiago. Today we're taking 13 kilometers from Santiana del Mar all the way to Cobretes. We'll tell you in a bit on why we're only walking 13 today. The weather is pretty crummy today. In Ireland they would say it's a nice soft rain today. It's pretty constant coming down, there's a lot of fog. But hopefully you can make it out behind me. There is one of the most important landmarks in Santiana del Mar. It is a church that dates back to 870 AD pretty amazing and we changed into our ponchos because like I said the rain is coming down but it is so cool experiencing a bit of history on the Camino del Norte it really feels like we're walking among history along these medieval roads the Roman road next to churches from 870 AD that's one of the coolest parts about doing this the views today are just amazing <laughs> Well, maybe they would be if we could see them. 
You just have to send the rain. And that poke over there. <laughs> The reason we're taking it a little lighter today and only doing 13 kilometers is actually not because we chose to, it's because it's the only option available. All of the accommodation in Comillas, which is a destination recommended by our guidebook from Santana del Mar, are totally booked up. And the only things available are pensions that are honestly not that nice for 80 plus euros a night, which just doesn't make any sense to us, doesn't make sense for our budget. And honestly, we came on the Camino expecting to spend anywhere between 10 and 12 euros a night for an albergue bed. and. Lately, we've seen they're up more like 24 euros a night for one bed in an albergue. So we found a decent hostel for a decent price. It's 13 kilometers away. So we have to go there. There is no other place to stay that is nice, reasonable money and a reasonable amount of steps away. So that's our only option. So that's what we're doing today. Just keep that in mind that sometimes you might not be able to walk what you want to walk or what your body is allowing you to walk that day simply because there's nothing available or maybe nothing within your price point. And not to mention that Ellie has seven blisters on her feet and she's still pushing through, just admiring how strong she is walking with seven blisters on her feet. Perhaps this is a lesson on booking accommodation a bit more in advance. We were under the impression that you could book as you go with the Camino. I think that's the experience that a lot of pilgrims had in the past just showing up places and there would be available beds but in 2023 that's not the experience we're having we normally try to look into accommodation the morning of for that night and still even with those 12 hours in advance things are totally booked up and the only things available are outrageous prices so maybe we'll try to book things a few days in advance and hopefully that helps but just know before you go that i don't know if booking accommodation as you go is a really viable option anymore. Small update, 4.5 kilometers in, we have arrived to Cabo Redondo. I'll put the name here so you know it, if I'm butchering it. We are feeling pretty good. Ellie's blisters are feeling really good, all seven of them. She took some ibuprofen, we're treating it correctly. We still have somewhere seven kilometers to go. And it's a really pretty town. It's a really pretty town. She's obviously feeling pretty good. I don't know what was that cry about in the morning, but She's doing pretty good. Is it really a morning if you don't have a, a quick morning cry? I mean, <laughs> come on, my cancer's out there. You know what's up. <laughs> and some change kilometers down we made it to Cobretes which is our final stop for the night we're staying in Albergue Viejo Lucas right behind me and like I said earlier we honestly could keep going we feel okay blisters feel fine but this is the only available open accommodation in the vicinity for the night so because this is all about accommodation we're gonna check it out and tell you how much it costs yeah, We just checked in and we're very pleased so far. This albergue seems really clean. They take really good care to prevent the spread of bed bugs. So everyone gets their bags wrapped in a garbage bag so nothing can transfer between bags and anything like that. Um, it's also really well priced for 15 euros a bed, including breakfast. So this is our first experience in albergue that's nice, clean, and well priced. Finally. This is what it's supposed to be like. Finally. Right? These, these are the albergues we're supposed to find along the way. So we made it. Now we're gonna make some noodles, catch up on work and whatnot, and just relax because for once we made it to our destination at a decent hour as well. It's 3 p.m. <laughs> we got plenty of time to rest these little piggies. And we'll see you guys again tomorrow. Who knows where we're going, but stick along to find out. Here we have the breakfast room. 
You can also get coffee, juice, and toast. Really nice. Good morning, guys. It's day 14 of walking Camino del Norte. We are just checking out from the Albergue Viejo Lucas in Cubreces in Cantabria. And I have to admit, this has been the most pleasant experience in the Albergue we ever had. The owner of it, it's really welcoming. You feel like you're coming home. Everything is super clean, super nice. They provide with everything. You have a kettle in the room, you can make tea, whatever you want. Breakfast is included. Breakfast is also really nice. Owner comes in the morning, make sure you have everything on the table and you're good to go. The rooms, the beds in the shared dormitory are 15 euros per person, but you can also have private rooms if you wish. For one person, it's 25 euros, and for two persons, it's 40 euros for both, with all breakfast included. So, if you're ever in Cobreches, Cantabria, or anywhere near, make sure you push through and make it to Viejo Lucas Albergue. Highly recommend. Highly. Highly, highly. And now, not sponsored, we just want to give you a nice info, guys. And now, we're hitting the road. We're walking 22, 23 kilometers today to... San Vicente de Barqueria. Si. Barquera, something like that. We'll put the name right here because we have troubles with the names correctly, but... That's it. Weather is a bit rainy, but we are feeling really good because of the experience we had here, so we are happy to hit the road. As you can tell from the church bells behind me, we have reached our first checkpoint, La Iglesia. That means we're about eight or nine kilometers in, and we only have four to go to Camillas, which will be a really cool experience. We have a few things to show you there. Times go really fast when you have this person with you. You'll learn so much, so many things with her. So grateful. Good, feeling the road, feeling better than ever. Woo! We love rain! We love rain! <laughs> okay, update. We have officially made it to Comillas, which marks 12 kilometers or 11 kilometers, not sure. We're gonna go in the city, have a little break, have some coffee, recharge. We're gonna show you something amazing in a second as well. And then from Comillas to our final destination, we still have 11 kilometers. We got this. We are in the heart of Comillas. Behind us we have the Iglesia de San Cristobal. And this is a really charming town. It seems to be a bit more touristic than the towns we're used to passing through on the Camino. It has a few souvenir shops and whatnot, um, maybe because of the landmark that we'll show you next. But it's really nice, and if you have a chance, highly recommend visiting. Just another one of the wonders that you see along the Camino del Norte. Behind us is El Capricho, which is a marvel of Antoni Gaudi, the famous artist and architect from Spain. This building in particular, he built for the Marquis of Comillas. If you have some extra time, you can actually enter and explore the grounds and the inside of the house for seven euros for an entry ticket. We, on the other hand, are going to keep moving, but it's still really cool to see it even from the outside. <laughs> They're too busy enjoying their grass. We'll get them next time, champ. We'll get them next time. Boop. The arrows can be a bit misleading when you're going through this portion of the trail, but just hug the coast and you'll go right through Oyambre Natural Park. And if you're seeing a ton of caravans, mobile homes, and camping opportunities, you're on the right path. There are other arrows, you could go another way, but this is the official recommended route. A little update. 
we got our eyes on San Vincent where we're going. That's still four kilometers to go. Pretty nice from distance. Again in San Vincent, we're gonna check out the another albergue that was recommended by the previous one. He said this one is as well really nice, really clean. Only downside is it has 38 beds and you cannot reserve up front. So it's first first come, first serve. So we are hoping we'll get a bed. And once again, it's about accommodation, so we'll show you how that is as well. And this is the placement of today's accommodation. That's us. We'll go inside and hopefully have a room for the night. Update. We were able to find some available beds in the hostel that we wanted to tonight. It's called Nomada Hostel. And actually, we got these two bunk beds. Super nice place. Seems really clean. And actually, it's only a donativo. So you leave a contribution that you think is fair, that is also fair to the accommodation. And that's it. No breakfast or anything included, but so far it seems perfectly nice, especially for being a donativo. Here are some lockers that you can use. And these are the bathrooms. Okay. This is the kitchen area. We're just filling up our waters. It also has a fridge, toaster, microwave, kettle, coffee pot, and all of the utensils and plates you could need. It has really nice views and there's even a little picnic area where you can enjoy some food. So after checking out the albergue, we are really pleased so far with the experience it is really aesthetic really trendy and seems really clean especially for being a donativo most donativos are public albergues which have a certain reputation but this one is a private one so it's private but it's still donativo it's really nice and honestly i could say we can recommend it well, we headed into town, had a really nice pizza dinner. We're back at the albergue. We're gonna get some sleep because tomorrow we have a really big day. It should be beautiful. We're crossing a lot of kilometers and we have a special surprise at the end. Since this is all about accommodation, we have one of the best ones yet for you guys. So see you tomorrow. Thank you for being here with us. Good morning guys, it's day 15 of walking Camino del Norte. Today we are walking from San Vincent to Pendueles, whooping 28.4 kilometers. And as we said last night, make sure to stick to the end because we left the best to the end. It's a beautiful, sunny, cloudless day so we can finally see the stunning Picos de Europa to the south. Okay, leaving San Vincent, there's going to be a bridge that goes above the highway, you cross that and there's an option you can choose. You can choose the alternative way, which goes through the forest and it's three kilometers shorter or you can take the official way, which we are on and it takes you all the way uphill for this amazing views. The option we choose this one is because it's Labor Day, so everything in Spain is closed. So we are hungry, we are hungry for some coffee as well. And there's a bar near here. We really hope it's open. But it's still nice to be in nature. At oh, least yeah. for someone. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. So we stopped at that restaurant on the way. It's called Bar Restaurante El Parador and highly recommend it if you need a stop between this day. There aren't many other options and this one was really good. Really reasonably priced and delicious, warm 
fresh food. So don't skip out on that. And now we're all fed, caffeinated, and ready to hit the road. 24 kilometers left. Let's see how this goes. The past few days, we've actually been walking along the same route as the Camino Labaniego, which is marked with this red cross sign. Different than the Camino del Norte shell and yellow arrows. It's red arrows with a red cross. We're splitting off from them today, but it's been really interesting. We've met a few pilgrims that are walking that route and it seems cool on another occasion, of course. But you go all the way up in the Picos de Europa mountains and stay at a monastery there with monks. And the whole thing takes about four days, I believe. So maybe another time, but just beware if you're doing the Del Norte route. We will come to a point today where we split off from them. Just don't continue with the red arrows because you will be up in the snow in the mountains in a few days if you make that mistake. As promised earlier, we are splitting off from the Camino Lebaniego and it is actually at this point right here. So if you continue straight on the road, you go up a dirt path and eventually you'll find yourself in a monastery about four days later up in the mountains. And here instead is our path on the Camino del Norte. We are going right on a paved road into Munio Brodero, two and a half kilometers. Hey guys, little update. We are in the town of Unquera, just a few kilometers outside of Colombres. Ooh, here's a map of the Camino de Santiago. We are currently here and in the next 25 or so days going all the way to Santiago. We're coming for you. After 20 minutes from last update, we are entering Colombres. And judging by our faces and our sweat, that was a big uphill. <laughs> that's, yep. that's the biggest uphill on today's day. It's all the way up. Now Colombres stays up on 150 meters above sea level. And then the next one goes down and then it's just straight from there. We're gonna check out what Colombres has. Maybe even grab some Del Dia. We are feeling pretty good, pretty pumped. We have it in us. Yes. Again, we've been struggling through the pains, through adjusting to everything, but I really think we got it under control. We are walking 28 kilometers now, like it's just like another day of 15 kilometers at the start. We don't even feel it anymore. So mm -hmm. just to mention that you will adjust. Everything will be good, trust me. We just finished an awesome meal at a restaurant called Capri in Colombres. We didn't get Menu Del Dia, but it was still mwah, really good. And now we have nine kilometers left to our final destination, Pendueles. It's always hard after a meal, guys. Uh, Don't I know. worry. <laughs> I'm walking and sleeping at the same time, so. I literally did that yesterday. He had to hold me and I was like closing my eyes. <laughs> so just stop, stop for a meal, but don't overeat. I mean, I didn't, but still like... It's hard I, to get going. It's really hard to get going. I had a small burger, but it still feels like, no, I want to mm -hmm. sleep. Yeah, so yeah, I don't know. Ah, we'll live, but... We'll live. Okay, nine more kilometers. Do we have this? Yes, we do, as always. Little update we just made to Buelna here. We still have two kilometers to go, so we're almost done with this gargantuan day, finally. And we finally made it to Albrecht Aves de Paso. And now we're gonna show you how it's like. Yeah, 
Very nice dinner. Very nice. Well, it's the next day. We're just leaving the albergue now, but we have to tell you why this was such a special experience. The woman who owns the albergue had such a powerful story. Her life was changed by the community and the bonding and the family that she made on the Camino, and she wanted to pay that forward and give that experience to other people. And I have goosebumps just thinking about it because it was so moving when she told it. So she opened up the albergue and has made it such a welcoming experience. You walk in and you immediately feel at home. There's candles, there's music. She's cooking a delicious dinner for everyone to enjoy. In the morning, there's breakfast, homemade bread. There was cake for her daughter's birthday. It really feels like she just enveloped us into her family and we made such special connections with the other pilgrims there and above all else it is a donativo albergue so again that is the true spirit of the camino nothing profit motivated just purely wanting to give a beautiful experience to other pilgrims if you have the chance don't do not skip pendueles stay here stay in aves de paso albergue we'll put the link in the description as well so you guys can have such a beautiful experience too. She does take reservations, so keep that in mind. There's only about 14 beds, but she's so welcoming. You will absolutely love it. And everyone here said it's the best albergue they've ever stayed in, even people who had multiple Caminos under their belt. So we'll never forget this experience. I feel really rejuvenated, really refreshed, got a good night's sleep, and feel so touched, probably for the first time on our Camino with the the real spirit of the Camino, feeling that community and authentic connection with other pilgrims and an albergue owner. So with that experience, we're ready to hit the road again, feeling really good, really refreshed, and we will see you guys next time on the road. Aves de Paso. Make sure to leave a generous donation so places like these can stay for a long, long time and can serve many more pilgrims. Thank you for watching.